Um, okay, so... Hey, Travis, do you want to make some new music for this, by the way? I do. All right, good. Get, get on that. I already did. Oh, perfect. You should send that <laughs> to me so I can listen to it. Okay. And I'll, tell you it's great, that. and then I'll put it in the intro. It'll be fine. That's going to be terrible. What, what was that clapping? Did you just, like, remake the Friends theme? Is that what that was? No, was Don't really do that. We'll get sued. <laughs> nah. That sounded like Green Day. Are you sure that was the Friends song? No, I'm not. I haven't watched Friends before. Fork stuck in the road. I thought it was Fork stuck in the roast. Yeah, that too. Same thing. Oh my god. Well, I should look at stuff over time. Um... I'm looking at the awesome plans from Mach 7 back in February 2016. Why? There's been a lot of progress working on that, huh? Why? Why would you... It's right, in the, it's right in the messages right there. Like, if you... Just... I mean, wouldn't you rather just, like, kill yourself instead of looking at all that? I mean... I'm, no, I'm gonna look at it. Oh, God. It's... Oh, no. You guys probably made a lot of progress. Oh, you know no. If I know Mach 7, that means we're gonna get oh, a lot no. beyond... The whole planning process. If I find out oh, no. oh no! All right. The last, anyway, link I remember, the, the last link in the chat there. Oh no! I, I, I made realize. some. I made some like demos using this choice script, and then I never heard anything ever again. Good times. So welcome to the first episode of Buffing the Addiction. I am your host Andrew. Hey. Joining oh, me this week, you're doing good. My co-host, as always, Travis. Hey everybody, we'll start over. And special guest, Stuart. Hello everybody. Seriously, can we start over? No, absolutely not. So, how have you guys been? Howard. What are you doing? It's been like a year since we've recorded a podcast, so what's going on? It it has. Ah, uh, so... Even longer since I was on one. For me, I have, have, have reformed from the um, peasant console race, and I've actually gone to the PC master race. In that I, would, I don't know if I would call that re- reformation. I would call that promotion or <laughs> choosing to better yourself as a human being. Uh, I Steve would call so it great. you being a nerd. So, Travis, what what made you join all the low lifes in the PC Master Race? Um, so I graduated from college and I realized I had nothing to do but time now. So <laughs> yeah, same. Like, oh no! <laughs> no, I actually got a. Uh, <laughs> A gaming PC, so I was able to actually get games off of Steam. Plus, they're so cheap when they have a good sale. So, and I found this whole early access gaming thing, and that really changed my life, and not necessarily for the better. Um, well, yeah, because all I mean, basically every early access game is trash. So, I would agree. Well, this trash is addictive. I would disagree now. with that because nah. I have a prime example, and I can share in Travis's pain. And predicament because I found an early access game that destroyed me in a way that I enjoyed thoroughly, and that is uh, have either of you heard of a game called Subnautica? Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> How'd so that, I bought how that. How did you sink that much time into that game? Uh, well, well, about the same way that you sink as much time into any game that requires a collection of resources and, and uh, some modern, no some modern feel- base building. Rust is what got me. Here's, it's okay. I will say that uh, Subnautica is not nearly as bad as a lot of games that have resource gathering and base building. Subnautica is very streamlined in that fashion. You don't need that much to actually get by. But if, when you and when you do farm, it's never for that long. Um, but I bought that game the day Winter Carnival started for twenty bucks, and I played that game like it was my job. <laughs> so I bought it like two weeks ago around two weeks ago I have 80 hours in it, and the majority of that is from Winter Carnival weekend I played about 40 hours um, from that Wednesday through that Sunday that's oh nothing that's nothing I got I got Here's rust the- at the beginning of December and it is now February almost into March and I put 400 hours into that game Christ. <laughs> so do you like that's have a job guy, or right? Uh, yeah, I have a job, and I'm going and working on my graduate's degree at the same time. Huh. How do I you don't get sleep. So, 
How? Okay, I was about to ask. Do you is okay? Wow, that's actually quite impressive. That's absurd, is what that is. It's both. How about it's you, both, Andrew? Honestly. What's 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 new with you? Uh, dude, uh, nothing. I'm finally living on my own, so I was feeling bored and lonely and nostalgic. So here I am making another podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was figuring this was going to happen those because of tendencies. About two weeks ago, you were starting to like reminisce about our old podcast, Mach Seven Dude, podcast. They were so oh. good. And then I was like, "Oh, I know what this is going to lead to." And then Dude, today is it. Sunday, and probably last week Wednesday is when I got a text saying, "Do you want to record a podcast?" <laughs> I can see it being exactly that twice. <laughs> it is pretty much what it sounded like when I was oh, talking no. about. So, and today I went back and uh, watched the. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online Let's Plays that we did, Stuart. Too good. Mm -hmm. Too fantastic. How many times did we say we're uh, entering the Lara Croft or we're uh, going to go see Captain Rana? Is that? There's a lot of um, Iron Pants. That was. There's a lot of Iron Pants treasure. Um, Now I need to look. Now I need to find this and watch it myself. I skipped the first episode, though, because it was garbage, but the other three. Okay. Two (laughs) nice. I forgot we did it in two parts. I forgot that we uh, you did it in four I forgot parts. That you edited it in two parts. Yeah. Was it four parts? Yeah. Really? Because oh. I made them shorter. They were only like. Hence why you said the first episode was bad, but the three episodes after that were great. <laughs> yeah. That equals four. Anyway, so they're only like fifteen minutes each, a, so that's why. Do we have a topic we want to start with today? Uh, I don't know. Do you have a list? I don't have a, <laughs> don't have a topic list. to talk oh, about, but I do want to say that I have another point to make off of the uh, off of what we just mentioned with playing Elder Scrolls Online together, you and me. And uh, I have a very I have a confession to make, and that is that I bought Elder Scrolls Online two months ago. Nice. Oh, I just went on sale like two weeks ago, and I think I made a mistake. Did you? It's not good. I played it for like a couple hours and just. Didn't feel compelled to continue. <laughs> but it's an MMO. You're supposed to spend like your entire life in it. Come on, man. I know. I mean, the tutorial was well. The tutorial um, in the dungeon was better than I remember. <laughs> and the game looks pretty good. The computer can handle it pretty good. And I like the new character I made. But I just don't feel compelled to continue. I don't know why. Maybe I'll give it another chance. But maybe when I have more time and not. Oodles of homework that's due in two hours from now. I felt the same way about the Old Republic. I got to like level 20 in that game, and then they cut your experience in half, and I'm like, all right, well, there's no reason for me to keep playing. Thanks, though. <laughs> See, I really like Lotro. That was a fun one, but that was free, too, so. I think I played that for a little while, too. That was a good one. Andrew, After I got out of. Um, nine views on this episode. What? <laughs> There's a whole nine views on this I know. Episode. Isn't it adorable? Our one has 27. I can't ah. imagine. That is a massive drop-off. <laughs> <laughs> Just such the quality that yeah. it was. Oh. It makes me wonder what they, what counts as views these days. I mean, they're probably so. just all mine, really. Let's face it. Oh. From, like, the past all, week. All seven of his different devices. Yeah. I can do it, too. I can go phone, computer... Watch me juice these views. 360, Xbox One, PS4. Oh, I only have five. Sorry. What about your tablet? I do not own a tablet. What? Why would I own a tablet? Uh, portability of your electronicsness. And... I would have literally zero use for a tablet. See, what I like about it is I, I can have GarageBand and I can watch YouTube on a larger screen than my phone. I mean, that's what my computer's for. Yeah. All right, good rebuttal. These are both good points, and I agree with both of you. Thanks, Stuart. You're the I'm best. Not arguer. being non-committal and whatever, I just I, I do agree with both those points. So and mostly, Andrew, mostly because I can't afford a tablet. You had uh, originally messaged me wanting to talk about um, a game that you're really interested in that's coming out next month. So, do you want to talk uh, about that? I can't think of. What you might be talking about? It was Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, Mass Effect Andromeda is coming out next month. Oh no! Yo, shout out to that game. Looking forward to it. That, I so, can you give us a little. I I didn't 
I, I told you I was going to look it up so I could actually talk about it, but that, that, that never happened because of early access games. Right, of course. <laughs> so, it all comes full um, circle. <laughs> so you wanted to tell us about it? Um, so yeah. in Mass Effect Andromeda, you play as one of the Ryder twins, and you go to the Andromeda Galaxy, and you have some new adventures. Uh, I, That's about all I know. Yeah. Great, and the podcast. Yep, Great, that's right it. There. Thanks for listening sure to episode one of I our new podcast, Buffing the Thick. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I trying to know avoid... more details beyond that. Um, sorry, go ahead. What? Okay. Um, I was trying to avoid a lot of the trailers and stuff, because I want to be surprised when I play it, but so I'm just so excited me about too. it. Uh, so did, you, did you crumble and watch them all? No, Six not yet. Over? Okay, good. Good for you. They have so many out. They do. And I'm kind of so, like... How many yeah, trailers are there? Then? I feel like it's going to ruin the experience when you, if you were to watch them all. You're like, oh, so I know exa- the exact story, and I know all the monsters yeah. that we're going to fight, and I know exactly, exactly what kind of powers I'm going to have. That's why I'm not going to watch I'm it. I am on a bit of a media blackout for that game. I am choosing not to watch any of the trailers. <laughs> Same here. Sue it, And I well, don't even know when its release date is. March no. 21st. I did watch okay, the, cool. the announcement, not the announcement trailer, but like the very first one where like it was, was it was it Private Rider, the the female one that was talking to you when she was like on the moon, and the creepy mm-hmm. guy was in the background as yeah. she was explaining you. That was like the only one I've watched. Yeah, that was the one for like N Seven Day or something, wasn't it? Yep, that was the N Seven so. Day. Wait a second. So wait a second. Are you saying that the Rider twins have ca- have talked to Shepard? No, I've never once mentioned no. Shepard. Wait. Oh, so who were you just talking to? Who were you just talking about? <laughs> the writer twins. Talk about Sarah Ryder I'm sorry. talking I had, to... I'm sorry. I got the impression that you said that um, the sister writer had, was someone that you could talk to in Mass Effect 1 on the moon or something. I missed no, her. No, no, no. That would be cool, though. <laughs> I mean, it would, considering there's literally nothing else on the moon in Mass Effect 1, except for just that for the base. AI base that ends up being Edie. Also, curious that there's no mention of any extragalactic travel plans throughout the entirety of the Mass Effect trilogy. Yeah, well, they're Ooh. a secret. They don't yeah, want the Reapers to find out about it. Yeah, a secret the size of a small moon, oh. or however big those ships are. Pretty big. Uh, apparently they're like as big as the Citadel. That's so huge. I'm actually really excited about the game, but I probably won't get it because I want to be able to finish my graduate degrees in my last semester. Nah, that's not important. And I'm already having a hard enough time focusing on it, so if I get that, plus Rust, plus I've also been playing um, H1Z1 King of the Kill. That's a really popular early access game right now, too. Isn't that like the game. worst early access game that ever created? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. There's far worse games, but... There are, you know, as I've done my like Daisy from um, Daisy was great too. Uh, but as I've done my tr- transition from console to computer, I have realized I am terrible when it comes to trying to shoot on the computer. It's <laughs> terrible. Like my KD isn't is it, like isn't it easier? Two, I mean, supposedly, but I using I, a mouse I, is easier than a control stick. Can you not use a controller on a dongle? I mean, <laughs> you said dongle. Why would I <laughs> shut up? Why right. would I use a controller okay. if I'm trying to use a mouse and keyboard on a PC? I thought that's even more so that you don't have to deal with WASD. Yeah, but the problem of it is a lot of the early access games don't have controller compatibility. Like Rust, there's too many buttons that it wouldn't fit on. You have to have a Steam controller to do it. And well, still that's the developer's problem. Fortunately for you, if you enter the Steam beta update, you can just assign your controller to keyboard uh, buttons. Really? Yep. Or you can get a Steam controller. Oh, or you could do that, too. 50 bucks. There it goes. Well, whatever you want to do there. What I'm saying is that some, a lot of games have controller support these days. There Kotor 2 has surprised. controller support now. How crazy is that? Uh, I played The Witcher 3 with a controller, and that was great. I really enjoyed that one with the uh, with controller. I would recommend that, yeah. Although I never played it with mouse and keyboard, so I guess I don't know. I tried them both. Ro- uh, Rocket League, I can only play with a uh, controller. Logical. Makes sense. Driving is game. hard with a keyboard. That's, it really is. That's as close to a sport that's as the I get in games, actually. Most I will tolerate. Yeah. Let me rephrase that. I don't use mouse and keyboard for a lot of games these days. But so, obviously some 
don't let you use a controller until you use nearly as effective. So, speaking of kind of early access stuff and games that are coming out next month, I just um, today picked up the open beta for Ghost Recon Wildlands. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's an amazing game! I thought you said it was 50-50. So it was 50-50. 50% good, 50% bad. The good part Perfect. really shines. Like, um, shut up. <laughs> uh, the gun, the gunplay is awesome. Like, it's so satisfying to shoot the sniper rifle or any of the guns. It's just so satisfying because it's really solid hitting when you are able to hit, you know, your target. It's it, that, that part's awesome. There's a wide range of uh, specialization you can do with your character when you level up. And same thing with the missions. There's a lot of different type of missions. The environment's gorgeous. Um, the animations kind of suck when it comes to like interacting between people. Like the mouth movement is way off. But the worst part of the game is the driving. And unfortunately, when you have a map that huge, oh. driving is fifty percent of the game, and it is terrible to drive in that game. The cars turn terribly. It's like. You can turn maybe around the radius of a bus. That's about as that that's as much as you can turn. Besides that, yeah, it's terrible. So you can't go too fast around the corner. And so it's like catch this target, and you're like, well, I can't quite catch up, or I'm gonna go off the side of the hill because this is Bolivia or wherever it's taking place in, which I guess has steep like drop offs, but the road is about half the size of the vehicle. So this is good, but, you know. Well, yeah, obviously. And so trying to fly, like, if you hit a, like, a bump when, when you're taking off a plane, like, because you figure that the developers have the runway at least reasonably flat, but nope, there's bumps all over the place, <laughs> and so you'll, you know, start trying to pick up speed, you'll hit a bump, and your plane will go straight right into the rock, and there's no way for you to back up. So you're like, well, there goes most of my experience points I could have just used, and there goes a lot of my ammo I could have just used, so this is great. But it reminds me a lot of uh, Far Cry 4. Uh-huh. It's very close to that. It's very Ubisoft that way. Gotcha. Speaking of open world games, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn comes out on Tuesday. Oh, oh my god! Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Looking forward to that. I can't wait for you guys to tell me how bad it is. That's only on PS4, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, and that makes me cry. Oh my god, I want that game so badly. It's gotten some pretty have... good reviews, so I'm looking forward to it. I have heard like it's like a solid 80, like, like a solid 80 or 90. Probably, probably a solid 90. Pre-release critics, critics, something like that, yeah. Solid. Solid. I've seen people compare the side quest to be kind of Witcher-like, so I'm on board. That's all I needed to say. I mean, I've never played Witcher, but I've heard great things about that are side quests. Ooh, Ooh. you never played Witcher? Side quests. Are I've never played Witcher. Too sweet. There are a lot of games I have not played, and I feel ashamed for it. But I feel like I'm in the know for at least a good number of them because of all the Steam and GOG had it on sale on like yeah, the Game of the yeah, Year no, edition for 20 bucks that's blasphemy There's you no should absolutely play The get. Witcher yeah. it's really good I haven't finished it yet but it's such how a have game. you not finished it yet wow you put 400 hours into the whatever game you're playing and you haven't finished The Witcher I was so regret <clears> saying that nonsense sorry I don't even know if I want to do this podcast anymore well, I guess we're going home now. Uh, well, been fun. Thanks for listening to the Buffering Podcast. <laughs> it's not Buffering. Stop calling it that. <laughs> uh, although Buffering the Podcast actually isn't a bad name for a podcast. <laughs> That's good because it's what I thought it was the first time you said it. No. No, it's Buffing the Addiction. Which... And so, speaking of podcasts, Yo. I have been listening to a lot of them lately. And one of them that I've been listening to a lot is... Um, the Adventure Zone. Have you guys heard of that podcast? No. I have not. So it's this awesome quality where these guys are playing Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. And Go on. You have my attention. They're hilarious. It is the best campaign ever. Uh, and it's so well done. Once again, it's called The Adventure Zone. Um, it's free on your podcast store. It's also on YouTube. Um, you can watch or listen to all their episodes it's just so good. The voice, like the voice acting for the stories, and it's it's not scripted or anything like that. Besides, for obviously the dungeon master having a whole campaign planned, but besides that, it's just it's perfect. It's excellent. I highly recommend if you guys like to listen to podcasts. If you are at all interested in Dungeons Dragons, I never played it before this. 
Um, I had never really known much about it before this, but now I feel like I'm a seasoned veteran when it comes to it. So it's really fun to have your wine, like, so, kind Travis, of dabble into it. What's up? Have I got a show for you? <laughs> what's how up? you bring this up? Have you heard of Critical Role? Yeah. Yeah. Andrew, have you heard of Critical Role? I have heard of Critical Role. I've never watched it. Alright, for anyone who doesn't know, Critical Role... <laughs> Do any of you um, actually watch it or have watched it? Mm -mm. No. Okay. So, Critical Role is uh, it's a Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition campaign, uh, but all of the players and the game master they're all professional voice actors that you've probably heard in some game or another. Like the DM is Matt Mercer, who is the voice of McCree in Overwatch, among many other things. Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, but does he say it's high noon? <laughs> He does not. Oh, well, ever. then what's the point? Well, he does that when he screws players when he plays Overwatch anyhow, so there's that. <laughs> I know. Such a good idea. Yeah. So, yeah, Critical Role is a... I, I could gush about it like Travis did for his, and it, they're in... How many episodes do they have out now? 80-something. And they're all, like, four hours long. Jesus. And I'm currently on episode 68, and I've been watching it I don't want to say... Okay, for a while it was religiously. Now it's whenever I have some spare time and feel like I have nothing else to watch. I'll sit down and play a game while listening to a couple of hours of an episode of The Critical Role. Now I'm on episode 68. That's it's awesome. Dragons. You have to listen to it. There's dragons and they're in a dungeon. What's best to listen to it? Is it on YouTube? It's all on... You, you can find all of it on YouTube. Their channel is called Geek and Sundry because they're part of a little internet network. Oh yeah, that's where I've seen so it before. You can find the playlist for it. Yeah. So there are 92 episodes, 83 of which are the main actual thing. Oh wow, so there's 93 episodes? 93 videos, 83 of which are mainline episodes. Um, so yes, Critical Role is a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good show. You should go watch it. Give me some love. They do it all. They also raise a bunch of money for charity doing it as well. Heroes yeah, and Half Wits. Diesel with Vin Diesel. <laughs> yeah. Heroes and Half Wits episodes yeah, are like are. an hour and a half long, and I struggled to get through them. They are. Oh they are God. not great. Oh God! As Wait, far what, as D &D. What, I'm sorry, I missed that part. <sighs> Heroes and Half Wits, which is uh, Rooster Teeth's produ uh, production of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, they have a lot of cross talk. It's not good. They do a lot of table talking. Uh, which I can't say that my table is is uh, absent of. No table is. Um, but they do do a lot of that. And honestly, I'm just not terribly impressed with uh, with, with, uh, with their DM. I think he's okay, but I feel like they try to do too much. And Maybe. like they don't need the whole like um, computer screen thing that they have, that they put stuff on. Like That kind of defeats the I mean, purpose have, of Dungeons & Dragons. I mean, they have the money. I know. It's just like <laughs> the whole thing is you're supposed to use your imagination, right? So stop well, defeating why do we the all have, well, then Why do we use minis? Well, <sighs> look, I can't answer all your Dungeons those, and Dragons questions. I was going to call this podcast those, Dungeons and Flagons, but don't I was like, eh. Ever. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Please, no. Why didn't we ever do a D&D &D campaign? It would have been perfect for us. Because I, I was all because I was probably already busy running Shadowrun at the time, that and now true, yeah. currently still really busy running D and D on the weekends. I do run. I do have a table uh, for D and D, and both my roommates are players. Along with, um, if you remember Mike, the guy with the hair, uh, he's also been on it. We had like eight mics. I don't remember the which hair. one. Did we? Have, we did have like eight mics, didn't we? Um, Guy with the hair occasionally wore a, a hat, <laughs> uh, pretty tall and loud. So it just describes everybody. So, yeah, fine. <laughs> anyway, I I am a DM with uh, for six players. That's the gist of that. All right, brag about it. Anyhow, well, well the point I'll is, brag about it all day long. I love my table. My, my player love me. Fuck you. All right. The point is, you should have. We should have done this. This would have been great. We should have. I mean, it's not like we can't. Uh, well. Still. It's harder True. now. Well, no, you can do roll twenty. What roll twenty has a 
I don't have a good history with Roll20, but I'm, I'd be willing to try if you want to have more time for myself and stuff like that. I think it'd be fun. Tell you what, we'll talk again after about after my last semester here is done. Yeah, once I have everything sorted out. Interesting. I did not know what Roll20 was, and now I do. Now you do. It fits, it's a it? map thing. Interesting. It's a map thing. Again, that I have a I bad history with because it doesn't seem. I just, I just don't know. Really All right. So anyway, enough about tabletop games. Who cares about that? Oh uh, no, never enough about tabletop games. I feel like I, we should have like a good rounded out discussion on all of our games <laughs> nah. that we're interested in. So tabletop. Is, let's just talk about like games. Halo for six hours or something. Yeah, Speaking no, of that, so just came uh, out yeah, sure. <laughs> last we week. I think did that for four semesters in a row. Yeah. <laughs> Halo Wars 2 just came out. Oh, yeah. Are you playing oh, yeah. that? How many cop outs are in that game? How many what? I said, how many cop outs are in that game? Is there any uh, space <laughs> parasite dust? Sorry, I'm making a reference to the last time I was on one of these podcasts and went on a full rant about cop outs in Halo. I don't remember that. I... I'll have to listen to the last episode again. I'll just listen to a ball. No big deal. Whatever. Anyhow, so how is how is Halo Two, Halo Wars Two? I, I haven't played it yet. I have a couple friends who picked it up, and uh, so far they love it. It has, on top of you know the usual because it's a strategy game based in the Halo universe. Um, there's it, it's you know uses a lot more uh, different type of enemies this time, and a lot more different troops you can choose from. Uh, but going beyond that, and so just a traditional strategy game. They have gone to also including a card game called Blitz with it. So I don't know much about it, but I just know that it's kind of like Hearthstone meets Halo Wars, which oh, no. I think would be kind of neat. Yeah, apparently it's pretty good. That yeah, seen. I heard so. People really enjoy it. But Blitz is or Halo Wars? The Blitz, Blitz mode well, specifically. Blitz oh. mode is a part of Halo Wars 2. Interesting. So oh, it's a mode in Halo Wars 2? Yeah, it's, it's a part of Halo Wars 2. Oh, it's not a separate game altogether. No, 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 no. Gotcha. It's, it's it's like a mode inside of it. So I, I think it, you know, it fits. I think it's good. I think it'd be, it, it gives some good change to what the game is and probably needed. So I really like that ad with the guy haggling over the price of a car with a brute. That's pretty, oh, yeah, pretty they have solid some advertisement. Some funny, uh, some funny commercial. So what else you guys got to talk about? So well, I know we just okay, started this back up, but we, uh, you know, we never really got to talk on any of our podcasts. And I really wanted to about No Man's Sky, especially okay. after there's been quite a few updates since it was released. Oh, no. Excellent. So I feel like it's Let's a good get topic. Into I this. Mean, it's, it's a little, it's a little bit overdue, and it's probably a little past a lot of this. Late pass. Kind of, Let's do it. But I think uh, I want to hear from you guys. You know, did you guys buy it? I did not. I did not. I was planning on it, but then all the reviews so, came out and it's like oh this I was game is nothing to it and then it turned out to be a dumpster fire yeah <laughs> so i'm the only sucker huh yeah you are apparently but uh, apparently uh, they're treating their loyal um buyer their loyal their loyal players pretty well this whole big update yeah there's been about three different updates to it that have really uh made it closer to all the plans that they were talking about. There's still no multiplayer in it, like <laughs> it was promised, and they kept talking about, you know, oh, yeah, you can be able to play with your friends, you'll be able to play with your friends. It's highly unlikely yeah. that you'll find each other, but you can play with your friends. Nope, nope, you can find each other, and guess what? You cannot see each other. But... <laughs> you so, can affect the world, but you can affect the same world. It is all the same universe still. Right. So, uh, but... When it came out, it was very limited in its gameplay. Um, but now, after the very first update, allowed like different modes. Like originally, uh, No Man's Sky, for those who don't know, was it's an ex- exploration game, kind of like Minecraft meets uh, the universe, like a space exploration. <laughs> where where you meets to, like, the <laughs> universe, <laughs> dude. They should put uh, that on the box. Minecraft meets the universe. Hello, Mister Universe. Um, you know, you get to explore different planets, go from planet to planet. Uh, and they were talking about how there's no load time at all, which isn't exactly true. There's there's no load screens, absolutely correct. But when your ship is just flying through a bunch of different like colors, or like, it's warping, there's just a bunch of colors all around you for about you know half a minute to a minute. <laughs> eh, to like, me, that's a load screen. I mean, you know, that's a load screen. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, but 
the transition is really fun. So, but after the first update came out, um, it it changed where originally the gameplay like you only had one mode, and that was just regular survival. You go from planet to planet, and it was just kind of like pop luck on the like conditions of the planet, where if it was you know rainy or if it was you know nice or if it was like acidic, you know acid rain, and or if it was radioactive or super hot, all those type of things. What if it was really super basic? Hot. I don't think there is such a thing. Oh, a really well, basic planet. Maybe I'm wrong, but no, I'm not familiar with it. My face red. But um, what so would be like. Then the update came out and it changed it up a bit. There, they came out with three modes. Um, one was just a traditional survival, like I just explained. Then the next one was hardcore survival, and that's where no planet you're on has is safe. All of them will have something. Whether it's they're going to be highly acidic. Or highly radioactive, or super hot, or super cold, um, super or the hot, or the uh, super. Stuart hot. already made that joke, super, but it's super like hot. I um, felt like it fit better there, so no, did it again. Again. Uh, The or or like the planet Sentinels, which are like the defense of the planet. They're, they're super right, but they're all like little floating robots. They might be super hostile, so whenever they see you, they start shooting. Super so hostile. it was goddamn stupid. Well, <laughs> so I'm the uh, one who's supposed to make all the terrible jokes. Well, now you have competition. You better step up your game, buddy. You're stealing my thunder. No. And right. the third update that came out it. made a uh, base, uh, ba- base building, and improved the uh, space battles because it was awful beforehand, but now it's much better. So I haven't played it since the third update, so I haven't been able to experience the space battles, but. It's gotten a lot better, so yeah, that's but that's No Man's Sky. Do the space battles matter if you can't fight against other players? No. All right. Just wondering. I mean, can't you hijack a freighter or something? I uh, don't probably. Even though I've heard they're uh, pretty well defended, those freighters. They're super well defended. All right, so I feel like I talked a lot about a game. So now somebody else has turned to talk about a game or. Or on a podcast. Uh, so apparently the Titanfall Two campaign was really good. Oh my gosh! I complete that game fell off my radar. <laughs> I, 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 I bought that game and it fell off my radar. But how? Well, that came out okay, the same so time I as bought as Titanfall. Football. Not so okay. So I so I bought Titanfall Two not long after it came out. Bought it with my with my roommates and my friends and we played for a while. And pretty good. Pretty good game. Unfortunately, I'm terrible at it. Yeah, because uh, I'm not good at first person shooters. I just I'm just not. Um, That's my only. And, and it is it is very much a twitch shooter, die in three bullets kind of game, which is not the kind of game I'm good at, unfortunately. So I just get pissed off whenever I play it now. <laughs> Still, really good game. No fault to it, no fault of its own that I suck at it and, it and I can't play it and get angry when I do play it. Now, all that said. I never played the campaign. I what? Know, and I, and what? I have I I have I I got the no reason. I have no reason for that. I have no justification for it. not having played that campaign yet. Well, we know what you're going to play after this. Except for sure. BT, because he's like the best robot character ever, aside from yeah, like he is. HK47 BLT. and K2S4 and all the other robots that are better than him. Ti38 or whatever his name was, little R2D2 and Kotor. Oh, uh, TC-38? TC-38, that's what it was. Yes, robots with numbers for names. Jeez. They're all best, right? Or, no, it's it was BBA, T3. baby! It's T3 something. His name was T3, not TC. Um, apparently it was super short, though, so I'm waiting for it to go on sale, then I'll probably buy it and try it, because I heard it was pretty good. Well, be careful when you get into the multiplayer, because anyone that's still playing the multiplayer <laughs> is a super veteran. Me playing multiplayer. Good joke. <laughs> See, I feel like that's one of the games I would get for Xbox. Just because it involves shooting, and I can't do that on PC, apparently. You should get all games for Xbox, because then you can get achievements. You can get achievements for the... Okay, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, nah, that's what I thought. It's nowhere near as satisfying as getting it on the Xbox. For some reason, that little gray box in the corner for Steam that says, Achievement lock, you're like, oh, uh, that's exciting. It's, but then it's a I, gamer score, man. It's addictive. It's the gamer score. It's totally the gamer score. I don't hear it. What is my gamer score at right now? It's like 50,000 something. Mine is like, I don't know, 2,000. I don't buy that stuff. 
I don't even have a one. I just have a 360 from back in the day. I only have that 360 because it came free with my laptop. <laughs> but man, there's a couple games on that that I'm uh, very happy that I got. 50,995. Okay. I need, I need an achievement that's worth five gamer scores so I can have exactly 51,000. No, nah, that's a weird, arbitrary number. You know, don't go for it. Yeah, but it's still, like, nice and just round. Just start trucking to 75k and just go from there. Oh, there's probably one in Mafia 3 that I don't have yet. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look. Hang on. Oh, Hang on. again, I haven't actually played an Xbox that's game, Xbox game, at least that I own in months. Did you guys ever try Battlefield 1? I did not. That's not I really did not. Your, your, that's not really your game style, is it? No. Andrew? No, you, you tend not to play multiplayer games. I do have... I actually have a bunch of Battlefield games, surprisingly. Because the story's good, I know. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go that far. I think Bad well, Company 2 had a good story. 3 and 4 were like, eh. I like 3. And I haven't finished Hardline yet, so... Uh, I don't think you need to. Uh, I mean, I might, eventually. <laughs> I've also played a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. How's that that's, going? That's a great game. That one is awesome, and I love how Ubisoft has, you know, kind of changed the way game DLC comes out now instead of the EA's traditional way of, oh, yeah, here's an extra two characters, but you gotta pay for the whole game again. <laughs> but now they've gone to, oh, yeah, here, every quarter of the year, we're gonna give you two new characters and two new maps for free. That's a good deal. Thanks for playing the, our game. Free games are always good. Well, free DLC. Free DLC is always good. I was going to name this podcast free DLC too, but then you told me it was already taken, so. Well, DLC itself was. It stands for downloadable content. This podcast with Jeff Kanata and Christian Spicer. Gosh. Very good podcast. A lot better than this one, but it's about video See, games. we should have called it free DLC, because it's like DLC for the original Mach 7 podcast. And it's free, because it's on YouTube, so. We gave, we gave away two games on our previous podcast. The thing what? about naming this podcast is that we don't have to deliver it on, deliver it on names. It's ultimately up to whoever uploads it. Yeah, which is going to be me, so I have to deliver it on <laughs> deliver on the name. Dude, I've eaten my... one pork bun in Sleeping Dogs. Nice. So I'm taking a look. Oh, another game that I've been playing this early access is called Miscreative. Speaking of DayZ, um, it's kind of like DayZ a little bit, Daisy. standalone. Never. And... Nobody would want to. What? What? Nothing. Go on. Keep talking. Never mind. I'm just trying to, to interest our audience in different types of games, including ah. Turok Dinosaur Hunter. It is now on Steam from the N64. Awesome game. So good. Brings it really back. Along with the Doom. Do you guys ever play Doom? The new one? Not the new one. Oh, it's so good. I heard it was really good. The Bethesda diehard you are would have played it. Nah, I'm not that much. I want it. Die hard. I haven't played Dishonored 2 yet, so... It's been on sale like 138 times since it came out last March. What, Doom? Yeah, for like yeah. 30 bucks or less. That, that's fine. In fact, I oh. even to... Okay, Travis, just What's a up? Quick, quick tidbit about me. Um, I can't afford games. I really wish I could. I can't afford games, and I can't afford to, uh, to play them very much right now. I can barely afford to eat. What? Why can't you afford them? Because he just said he could I'm barely afford to poor eat. I'm a poor college student, that's why. You live in campus housing. I don't. Dude, Wait, what happened to job? I is moved great. off campus uh, like last year. It's nice. I've been in the same house for two years now. Well, congrats. Welcome to poor yeah. poor people town. Yeah. Where I can eat whatever what? I want. Rainbow Six Siege on you PC know, not is 15 crap. bucks right now. That's, that, does, that, that doesn't impress me, honestly. 15 bucks? Oh, 15? I thought you said 50. No, $15. Oh, that's Siege. different then. That's very impressive. <laughs> Color me impressed. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's a permanent price. Well, it's not even on sale. It's a permanent price now. It's too bad that's the same cost of uh, four meals at my house. <laughs> I know so that struggle. Balance that math out. <laughs> so, talking of food, real quick, have you guys heard of Soylent? Uh, Yes. As no. in not not as in Soylent Green, but just Soylent. Oh, isn't it like oh. people or something? Not not Soylent Green. Oh, oh wait, isn't uh, that like I a, don't know what you're talking like about. Then. Isn't that like a drink? You, you... Yes, uh, it comes in several forms now. the The main that they do is the, the main that they uh, advertise is the well, not the main that they advertise. They advertise the drink more. It doesn't cost a little more. They are active business. 
but the powder is what yeah is what their the first product was. And basically, soylent is everything that you need in a powder uh, or a, or a bottle. Uh, and so I was at a Hackathon this life. weekend. Just it's got just back today. Looks disgusting. Wait, wait, wait. And wait, they where were you? At a hackathon. What's that? It's basically where several dozen engineers and computer scientists and nerds get together uh, for a 36 hour event where you just make something. Whatever you want to make. I made an, I made an Android app. Did that cost the you money? No. Oh, I was about to say, we can't afford games, but you can go to Nerdathon. And you're, you it know, was free to go. Freaking nerd. It was nerd. free. It was, hey, hey, you, you shut up. It was free to go there. It was free to download the uh, uh, studio that I used to make it, to make the uh, app. There was free food. And uh, I was totally free of uh, proper night's sleep the whole weekend. So screw you guys. Could you go there and make something like not computer related? Like just like paint something? I guess. Do, do you think people would look down on you for that? I mean, not outwardly. <laughs> of course not. It's computer science students. No, they would never look down on you. There were some guys doing robotic stuff. But a lot of it was Freaking software nerd. stuff. One guy had a, uh, a HoloLens. He was doing a bunch of AR stuff with it. Nice. It's pretty neat. How can you get a HoloLens? Um, are those the things that are out? It's a... Lens? Yeah. Basically, you, you, you slap it on your face and you can... Oh, that uh, type. I'm thinking of hollow ones like you put on a rifle. Mm. I you stick that. it on your face, and it's a automa- augmented reality display. Yeah, like, like Microsoft Christ. hollow ones. Like yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, neat. The well, development edition of the hollow <clears throat> lens is three thousand dollars. Yep. Uh, wow. Why? How did that guy get one? I don't know if it was the same thing, or if it was. Oh, that's so expensive. He got wow. a grant. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it was $3,000 because it had the capability to, uh, on just the HoloLens itself, it had the capability to do, uh, to perceive and draw triangles of the environment. It just map 3D uh, to, your, to, the, to, the, to the computer. <laughs> Have you guys gotten into the VR stuff at all? No. Uh, yeah, my boss at my work... He has a PS VR, um, and he lets me play it at lunch all the time. Nice. Or he let me stay after work, and he let me just like stay in the office and <laughs> play. Like That's my neat. boss is awesome. awesome. He's like, dude, 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 dude. I just got this new game. You have to try it. And like, he makes me try his PS VR <laughs> games. I'm like, I got the best boss ever. And he's been like, he's so excited for um, for Horizon Zero Dawn next week. He's like, dude, I'm gonna bring it in. You got to play it. But he's like, the only game I'm really scared to try is, um, what was it? Uh, the new Resident Evil. Oh, yeah. No, you should try that. That would be fantastic. In PSVR? Oh, uh, I don't know. That sounds Dude, terrifying. that game is so good. It, I watched uh, a few YouTubers play it, and... I did too. Yeah. It looked, um, it looks good, but... It's like, especially compared to Resident Evil 6, it's like a return to the original, original Resident Evil. Yeah. Even though it's in first person, they made it work. I like that. I, I prefer first person because third person, you, I have trouble with shooting. You really need like first person or the fixed camera angles that the first Resident Evil had. Right. When it's third person, it's just like an action game. It's not really horror. Oh, hey, real quick. I'm going to take a couple steps back because uh, I didn't get to the actual point I was trying to make when I brought up the hackathon. Oh, right. Go for the, it. At the hackathon, they had a, a few cases of Soylent drink to, to pass out and like samples and stuff because well what else are you going to do for like a hundred college students that are all eating pizza for dinner one day passies uh, the next day and pop tarts in between and stuff like that and probably yeah. brought a bunch of, and there's having a bunch of soda. Turns out tastes pretty good. Really? Yeah. It doesn't look like it would taste good. <laughs> of course it doesn't. It's, it's, hel- like- it's healthy. What healthy food looks tasty? Don't answer that. Okay. Um, the uh, best way that I can describe it, and it does, and it's not going to sound the best when I describe it here, but I can tell you right now, it tastes better, and it only tastes better when you drink more of it because it's a bit of an acquired taste. But it tastes just like 
the milk after a bowl of Cheerios. Huh. Yeah. That's oddly specific. Oddly specific, but it's very apt and accurate. I had five bottles of Soylent over the weekend. It kind of looks like it would be post-Cheerios milk, too. Yeah. Maybe it just is. (laughs) Okay. I drink five of those. Uh, But yeah, each of those bottles was 20% of everything uh, dietary needs. And we're great. Huh. (laughs) So, that sounds interesting. Um, Yeah. Can I switch to something real quick? Are you about to go to an ad read? Because that's what it sounds like. Well, no. But, uh, can I switch gears real quick? Dude, go for sure. it. So, I was, while we're talking here, I was trying to see what kind of games are on, on sale on Steam right now, so I could think about a few things we could talk about. And I saw that it's a free weekend until yeah. March 2nd, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. The uh-huh. user reviews, recent, overwhelmingly negative, <laughs> and overall, oh. mostly negative. Yeah, but what does Modern Warfare Remastered have? That's what's really important. Well, once they sell it as a uh, standalone, as a standalone, yeah. then we'll be able to actually tell. I thought for sure that would be a standalone by now. Uh, like, not not until not until next quarter. I think. I was thinking at, like February. They, they would start no, no, selling no. it by itself. May, May, maybe May. We'll see. Between March and May, but it says it's a free weekend, so I don't know how to how to how to download it. You just go to Steam. And, uh, it might actually already be in your Steam library. So you just have to install it. No, it's definitely not there. But it's only the multiplayer. Right, because I don't really need the story. Pretty good story for that, too, surprisingly. Also has a robot friend. Robot's name is Ethan. Have you played it? No, but I watched someone else play it. On a Twitch stream. Weekend deal. Offer ends May, March 2nd. This is dumb! (laughs) This is dumb. Oh wait, no! It was the you can play for free until today at one p.m., but it's on sale until March second. There you go. That's, That's dumb. No, it's on sale. Just buy it. You'll be fine. No. All right. I want I want to play for free, but then there was Wildlands that I had to play. Well, you didn't have to play it. Oh no! I thoroughly enjoyed Wildlands. Yeah, but it's like fifty percent bad though, right? Uh, it's only half bad. That driving part was real bad. God. Real bad. Seems like oh hey here it is. It seems like uh, they should make the driving better. It is just like a tech demo, right? That's what it's called, like a technical something or other. It's like a like a te- like a technical demo, a tech demo, yeah. tech demo. Yeah. So Shut maybe up. it'll be uh, maybe it'll be improved. Yeah, but it comes out March seventh, so I don't really know how much work they can do in two weeks. Uh, yeah, you're right. I don't know. So I, I get your point, but it's kind of like, uh, dude, I didn't know when not... it was released. All right, don't judge me. I thought for a while th- this has since been corrected. I thought for a while that Infinite Warfare was the previous Call of Duty game. No, that was Black Ops Three. You get no, confused they... because they look exactly yeah, the same. Oh no! And before that was Advanced Warfare, and I haven't played uh, Call of Duty games since Modern Warfare Three. Yeah, probably for the best. Or was Black Ops 2 after that? Black Ops 2 was after that, yeah. Oh, okay. I played a, Black Ops 2. I played original Modern Warfare, but I never finished it. I gave me and the so only other one I played besides that was Call of Duty 2, the big red one. The original uh, Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 were amazing. Yeah, Call, Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 1 was <laughs> yeah. a pretty good game. I never finished it, though, because that was back in the days when I was still renting video games. Uh. I, I couldn't get on my birthday because I was a kid back in the day. There's nothing wrong with renting video games. There's a red box like right next to my house. Video, I the only thing that sometimes you don't finish a video game. I always forget to check GOG each week for, for games. They have a lot of older stuff Steam. on there. Probably why it's called Good Old <laughs> Games because it's a lot of older Good old games. Is that what it stands for? Yeah. I thought it was like Guild of Gamers <laughs> or something like that. Guild of Gamers, another good podcast no. title. <laughs> yeah, just keep driving that into the ground. Sure. Dude, I'm going to do my best. Y- you know what? This whole thing comes on. The- this whole uh, idea of relaunching the po- of rebooting the podcast just comes on the heels of um, interesting happenstances. Like, coincidence. Pure coincidence that 
uh, just the other day, I was on my Google Drive and thought, hmm, what's this over here? That's the Mach 7 folder. Oh boy. What do we have in here? Don't go in there. And I went back and read some of this stuff for, uh, for seven. Oh no, um, he did it. Like, oh no. Aww. I did. And I went through um, a few of them and thought, well, that's still not half bad, but let me just change these so that they aren't um, names that already exist in other media because we were a bunch of hacks back in the day. Uh, back in the day, we still are. <laughs> Less so now. So yeah, I, uh, I did that. And also, fun fact, uh, when we were trying to get this other thing for space engineers, uh, bottom feeders, we were trying to do all that, um, and it just eventually went nowhere. I found out at the same uh, on the same day that I went through all the, the seven stuff. I found out that it turns out uh, there is nothing left of that, any documentation or scripts left over that I was pretty happy with at the time. Just no, can't find them. They're not on Google Drive and on my computer. <laughs> And unless they are on my computer, I need to search hard enough. Hard enough. Um, there's a few blueprints in the Space Engineers game, but nothing of what I remember us having. That's unfortunate. And this all comes from the sit from this all stems from one update for Space Engineers where they have uh, brought in a cutscene editor. Oh no. One of their updates is a cutscene. Uh, their uh, most recent update, or second most recent update, is now you can make cutscenes in the game for all your uh, original content that the that Keen Software House, the guys that make that game, just they, they they push that so hard. You can make whatever you want. Here's the tools to make them. Here's the hey modders. Here's the API for the game. Hey a, a, hey uh, um, more casual players that are still really creative. Here's a way to make scripts in the game that use actual C sharp language. Um, hey everyone else, here's all the tools you need to, uh, here's all the tools and specifications you need to um, put models into the game and all that other stuff. They just really want you to make whatever you want in Space Engineers. And now they've got a cutscene editor on top of like scenario editor where you can even make your own campaign. And they have a tutorial campaign. That's another game that you were stuck on for the longest time. Yeah, I have. Let me just quickly look at how many hours I have of that in Steam. Not counting, I'm going to uh, make a quick subtraction for the amount of time that we spent in game for um, our attempt at Brian's thing, and then later uh, for bottom feeders. Uh, so, discounting those two, generously, I have about six hundred hours in space. Jesus Christ. And how long would you think you put that many hours in? How do you mean? Like, um, like how many months did you have that six hundred hours in? Over the course of a couple of years, I think. Oh, I that's a not while. bad. All right, then I've I had for a while. You in, in three months. Man. I've almost matched you and Russ. This was my main game for a while. I, I, I'll occasionally get back into it for a few weeks. Um, back in early January, January, just uh, December, around there, I had gone through. An, I had uh, done another fit of, of playing. It was a um, few sessions of playing and explored the content that they have for the planets since I didn't think I could before. It turns out I can. My computer can't handle planets. Just be careful. Um, and I started on, started on planet and eventually got off world. And that's where I stopped playing. That's a pretty good game. Pretty good game. Pretty solid. Unfortunately, it's not very forgiving of little mistakes. You can, sca- you can save scum all you want, but if something crashes, it'll... Oh. Uh. St- shit goes wrong, man. It's probably also one of the most highly populated um, Steam Workshop pages in all of Steam, easily. It's gotta be the most. It's gotta be the biggest. So, I wanted to find out how many hours I have in whatever game I have the most hours in. I have uh, 3,579 hours in RuneScape. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, why? Fuck you. How many? Holy shit. Over 3,500. Okay. <laughs> Since uh, that's middle school. That's gotta be the eight. only way. What? That has to be the only way. Did, did you leave the, the game on running overnight? No, I mean, for, it would log you out. days at a time? Or did you actually just only when you were playing it, did you have it on? 
I mean, only when I was playing it, because it's RuneScape and it'll lock you out if you're not playing it. Holy shit, hold That's on. That's why you have an auto-clicker. <laughs> I'm not going to use an auto-clicker, though. What, you want me, but you how want me to get banned or something? Game. Come on, man. Auto miner. 3,500. Oh, yeah, because... The... It's 149. That's 100 and... Well, that's okay, the... Okay. The, oh, the, mm, the mods are all a bunch of sadists if they're going to ban someone for using an auto clicker in rune state. Yeah, that's exactly what they do. It's 150 oh. days. It's 149 days and three hours. Oh, why? Since I was in that's middle school. Year. So... I mean... Well, okay, yeah. Middle school, that'll do it too. That'll do it for you. Never mind. So, Carry like, on. almost ten years since I started playing God. on this character. Yo, shout out to RuneScape. You play that so much still. Still can't stop. <laughs> I'll stop for, like, months at a time, and then I'll come back to it. But for months at a time. For months at a time. Because I'm a worthless piece of crap. That's why. See, I have so many games on my Steam list that I haven't even played yet. I hate yeah, that. Cause, cause I'm like, so many oh that I got from, there's so many that I get from Humble Bundles that I'll just never, ever play. Wait, and what is that? Remove from a list. Humble Bundles? I don't know what that is. It's where it's like a charity event, and they put a whole bunch of games up for, like, as like pay what you want, but if you, uh, but if you donate above the average uh, donation, then you get a bunch more games. You can get three to... So you can get like five to ten games that way, and I've done that several times in the past. I don't anymore because I learned my lesson. Why? Because you bought a bunch of games that you never used. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm complaining about all these games that I'm never going to play that I got for ten bucks. And you donated to charity, you monster. Yeah, m- me a monster. Yeah, whatever. It's just, it just I, I just want to remove them from my library. So I don't Why? Mean, this huge you can hide just, them so you can't see them anymore. Can I? Yeah. How do I do that? Uh, oh if God, you right click on the game, that? go to set categories, <gasps> and there's a button at the bottom that says hide this game in, in my <gasps> library. So let me ask you this. How many games do you guys have in your Steam library? Uh, I don't know. Is there an easy way to see that? If yeah, you yeah. hover over library, it says oh, right. games different. I have 114. Uh, yeah. I have seven. I gotta do some math here. So, let me see. Banner Saga, 20 hours. But that doesn't count games. My, my GOG games or my CD games either. Banished, 90 hours. I was going through and trying to get hit the high points. So, Bastion only took 8 hours. That's surprising. Oh. Dude, that's a good game. Yeah, that's a pretty good game. Uh... Bioshock, I have for Xbox, so that's not going to show up here. Never mind. Borderlands 2 and pre sequel. Wait, how do I have 100 hours in pre sequel? Uh, I have 178 games in my library. I Oh, no, that's not 100 hours, it's 100 <laughs> minutes. I have 100 minutes in pre sequel. Dude, pre sequel's so good, though. I. All I the Australians know. on the moon? So good. <laughs> I didn't uh, like that you had to have uh, oxygen all the time in that game. It was super obnoxious. Yeah. It's like a second health bar. Like, just stop. I don't need this. You know what it is? Pre-sequel. Uh, I didn't continue playing pre-sequel because when I got it, it was when me, my two roommates, and one other friend, uh, we all got it at the same time, and we all played at the same time, played it, and uh, it was about as much of a mess as you would imagine. Yeah. It wasn't because, like, oh, let me... Um, Grab the, let, let me grab this loot, or someone's like hogging all the kill, or what have you. No, just somebody was always sprinting five miles ahead of the rest of the group, and I couldn't, I, I couldn't interact with whatever was going on. <laughs> it just happens. It pisses me off. Yeah. So, uh, Borderlands two hundred and twelve hours. Oh, I have Castle Crashers. I didn't know that. <laughs> the more you know. Isn't it fun going through your games? But like, oh, I didn't even yeah. realize I had this. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Dark Souls 3, 265 hours. That is an remember when honest we played Drunk Souls? commitment. Hmm? Do you remember when we played Drunk Souls? Oh, yeah. That was okay, my I'm first hangover. Sh- yeah, I'm surprised <laughs> you guys remember. That was, my first, that was my first hangover. I can't believe you guys didn't <laughs> record that. Yeah, me either. So it would have been It wasn't funny. that bad. It wasn't that It, it wasn't that great. Oh, it was yeah, great. you say that now. It was not as awesome. great in hindsight. If only was that, did we also name that character Meat Toboggan? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> it was uh, more of like I don't know. After the first 
15 minutes, I just didn't care anymore because I kept dying. It's okay. I mean, it is Dark Souls, so... 24 hours in Dust and Elysium Tale. Oh, I got uh, Destiny recently. Oh, a game, sweet fuck. A game that I told myself I would never, ever buy. I bought. You mean Borderlands? It's Destiny. Is that, is that what... Yeah, I know. Did, <laughs> is that what we used to call it? Was it, was it Destiny that we... You mean yeah. Borderlands? Okay. Yeah, that's exactly it. Thank you for remembering. Which um, podcast was that? What number was it? No. Um... I mean, I'm pretty sure the podcast name is You Mean <laughs> Borderlands board. Cast, so I think you can find it. <laughs> I, okay. So does Destiny have a story now? Uh, they, yeah, I mean, there is a story to it. I haven't paid much attention to it. I'm more obsessed whenever I'm playing the game that they switch the voice of Ghost from oh, yeah. D- Dinklage to... Nolan North. Is it, yeah, a, Nolan is North. it an improvement? Not really, because Nolan North is, is has a really high voice to it and everything, and it's just very, like, up here. And it's, there's, like, no emotion still, and it's just a really high voice now. He's a robot. I know, but I'd rather have Dinklebot. He was down here, and he's explaining it like this. And I'd rather have him uh, flying voice like this. Well, I'm probably never going to play Destiny, so it doesn't matter to me. That's what I said. That's what I said. But then I found uh, this, this website called Half.com. Which is eBay's like clearance where people sell games for super cheap, and so I think I got it for four bucks plus three ninety nine shipping and handling. So for seven bucks, I got oh, Destiny. Hey, asshole! You Let me tell my story. <laughs> Let me tell my story. You were so adamant when Destiny came out about how terrible it was going to be. <laughs> I, I was adamant about how terrible it was. It just I, blows my mind. Because of the demo, man, it just it was so limited. I mean, isn't it still like? Yeah, but when you just you, it, the go through the same old stuff. Bucks, six bucks versus seven. I mean, sixty bucks versus seven bucks is a big difference. Like for for some, you said bucks, it was four dollars, and the shipping and handling was three ninety nine. That's basically four dollars. It's eight dollars. I said seven. I know. You said the shipping and handling was three ninety nine, right? So that's almost four. So, it'd be so eight. it was seven ninety nine. So it's seven dollars. Yeah, so it's eight. <laughs> You're rounding. Yeah, I do round occasionally. I've been known to round. I will say that the raids look pretty fun in Destiny, but I feel like I would never be good enough to be able to actually do them. So I would never survive without some sort of aim assist. Yeah. Never. Dude, what if wow. Dinglebot could function as an aimbot? That'd be incredible. Yeah. Well, you need to shoot a little way, higher. Though. You need to shoot a little lower. <laughs> you like that kind of assistant? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or your character right. just says, it's high noon, and then shoots everybody really quickly. <laughs> the... I don't get it. It's an Overwatch joke. Because Overwatch McCree's, McCree's ult program. is Tim auto-aiming on everybody. I don't understand why that game has so much praise. Because it's basically TF2. More yeah, or less. But, Except it's but, better in just about every way. Yeah, see? No, it's, it's so it's, limited. Speaking of limited gameplay... Okay, how is it limited? It has more heroes and more maps. But that doesn't change the game type. Are you saying that... TF2 is better because I never it once has said TF2 is a better. similar... I'm saying the, game okay. the gameplay because it's the same gameplay. But it's the exact same game mode. Okay, what would you do? When is Overwatch getting hats is the real question. That's not a question I, I ever want answered. I don't know. Like All they have right now is, is that guard the arsenal thing cross. Why don't they have team deathmatch? Why don't they have capture the flag? Why don't they Because have... that's not how the game... Because they... Okay, okay one quick thing. They are planning on implementing a capture the flag mode. Okay, the game is a year old. Because, hey guys, remember Lucio Ball? Those no. were the days. And two, Travis, because the game is not balanced for team deathmatch. Does TF2 have a team death? Have a have um? Once again, you keep referring to TF2. I don't. I'm not saying anything about TF2. You I'm were saying just saying about TF2. No, I never once compared it to TF2. I said I did. Itself. That was me. Okay, Andrew. thanks for Both poisoning the well. For, thanks for poisoning the well, Andrew. Guys, you're ruining the podcast. Oh no! What will we nah, do? Nah, just kidding. You're time? making it better. 
Yeah, great. Um, yeah, thanks for calling attention to it. <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I.e., e. shut up, Andrew. Travis! Wasn't me. What? Team... Okay. Mmm. Team... <laughs> I was about to say the game is not balanced for for uh for I was about to say the game is not balanced for team deathmatch, but honestly, okay, I was going to say it's not balanced for team deathmatch. Then I was going to say then I was going to uh, second guess myself because I had thought you meant because I thought you'd said just deathmatch, which is clearly not balanced for that. Um. Yeah, that's and now I'm going really back on it again because it's not it's not balanced for team deathmatch because a lot of the heroes are are balanced for uh, controlling points. All right, so why don't you, you get your turrets, you get your that? shields, you got your uh, um. It just is. I, I I could go into the details, but honestly, I'm running on six hours of sleep in the last two days, and my not my sir, brain's not doing too good, sir. Blaming your lack of sleep for an argument. Travis, it's Travis, not an please. argument. Yeah, fine. We'll just not have an argument. Whatever. I win. Overwatch sucks. Moving on. It's Who's the okay. best I haven't Overwatch? Played, I haven't played Overwatch in a while. I've never played it. It's played pretty it good. It's pretty weekends. fun. Pretty accessible. And you don't die in three bullets, which is refreshing for someone who sucks at those games. That is always nice. Unless you unless you run into a, unless you run at a bastion, then you just yeah. Oh, I love bastion. That's why I play. Some reason uh, that doesn't surprise I, me. I you definitely seem like the type of person that would play bastion. Yeah, I believe it. I, actually, I, I figured you would play either Genji or Soldier. I play Genji and Soldier too. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> and I play the, uh, the 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 sniper girl. Widowmaker. Not Widowmaker. Eh. Yeah, yep, that one, and then the other one, that I, the one that I really like is is the ice, the ice girl. Man, right. yeah. Are you sure you play Overwatch if you don't know their names? Yeah. I, Shout I, out to the ice girl. <laughs> the ice queen. Literally could have said anything. He probably would have agreed with us. It's like, oh yeah, that's uh. <laughs> that's summer. yeah, that's turnstile yeah. Maggie. That's ironic because she's a winter one. I hate you. What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So much salt coming from that direction. Just a little bit. We'll be seasoning your food. <laughs> I mean, Farah, occasionally May, occasionally Zarya. Yeah, those um, aren't even real characters. What do you? What do you? Dude, mean that's my line. What are you doing? I, I don't even know what you mean by that. Why am I even here? Yeah, you, you're here to talk about Halo, which we already did. So go, so go away. Oh yeah. Me? Remember the time Halo Five was really, really oh. bad. Uh, the campaign was really bad. The multiplayer was excellent. Ah, so who is who is the best Overwatch character? Bastard. Uh, Why is it Roadhog? I don't want to... What? <laughs> I don't want to answer that question because just asking that question is asking for a flame war to happen. Yeah, but not if you answer Roadhog because it's clearly the correct answer. Now, war, Roadhog is up there, but the second you pose that, it, it it's, uh, it's, a, it's a delicate... Precipice that you're standing on before it descends into full on waifu wars. I literally haven't ever played this game, and I'm just naming characters at this point. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Stuart's taking this very seriously. So I'm so, not taking it. Overwatch as is love. Overwatch is life. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, well, I play characters mostly because of their characterization, so I would have to say Pharaoh and Zarya are my favorites. Is this kind of like your whole Biocock Infinite experience that you really like these characters? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> Do you remember that story? Maybe we should um, share it with, our, with our new, with say, our new park. Is, is it, could you just repeat what you said? Yeah, Biocock Infinite. <laughs> oh, that is what you said. I remember that now. Yeah. Jesus Christ. You want, you want to share that? Um, share that story. Well, I don't know if you should share the link like that over the... Over the no, 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 not Discord share channel. the link. Share your experience. <laughs> Jeez. I don't remember my experience other than laughing hysterically. Well, it's been a continued joke in, in the Mark 7. Oh, no. So. Has it? I literally haven't heard it since the podcast that that happened. Did you guys see Rogue One? I yeah. did. I did see Rogue One. Did you guys like it? 
Okay, so here's the thing that I'm going to say about Rogue One, and that is something that I think a lot of people I know will disagree with me. Yeah. That's interesting. And I don't oh. understand why they okay. will disagree with me. And I'm going to say that I liked it because I was entertained by it. Yep. I I'm not saying it was cinematic gold, cinema, uh, cinematography gold. I'm not saying it's film of the year. I'm not even saying that it was written uh, well in all in all of its in all of its scenes. But I was entertained, and that's what I go to the movies for. I don't go for Shakespeare. I don't go for a life or enriching experience. I go to be entertained. And if I get any of that other stuff, hey, gravy. So Rogue One was entertaining. I liked it. I would see it again if given the, if given the chance at no cost. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't pay for it important. again. I mean, I'm poor, so. But yeah, I thought yeah. Rogue One was good, and it's I pretty do like at the uh, the at the end. Didn't realize how much of a prequel that movie really is. Like up to the last freaking yeah, minute, it's it's like Reach directly it leading into it. It's like the end of like, Reach into Halo One. Like an hour before, um, the events of Episode Four. So I really liked K2SO4 because he Everyone was basically it. HK47 and it made me happy. He was also voiced by Alan Tudyk, so there's that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Also, that scene at the end with Vader looked like something straight out of a horror movie, and I thought that was yeah. fantastic. I think, that was, I think that that is the only time we will ever see actual Darth Vader be actually badass on an actual yeah, movie no, right. screen. It was so because good. all the others are from the prequels, which never had good choreography. Ever. Didn't, no, that's... I mean, Those the fight with movies I don't mean, actually Luke exist. versus Vader. Luke versus Vader was was uh, was pretty good, but this was actually Vader being Vader. It was terrifyingly awesome. I'm just, just sad that Kyle Katarn is non-canon because he is the best Star Wars character. Who was he again? Uh, so he was in the Jedi Knight series, and in the first game, Dark Forces, the whole plot is Kyle Katarn getting the star or the plans for the Death Star. Mm. So, so this basically gets, completely wipes okay. him out, but hmm. I wish it wouldn't because he's cool. That's and I miss cool. him, and why isn't there another Jedi Knight game? I'm mad. Because then Star Wars gets sold to Disney? Yeah. and Disney That's no excuse. Doing... They could still make Jedi Knight games. They're not pursuing video games from, for I know. Star Wars. It's ridiculous. Except it's for mad. Battlefront. Yeah, then they put out Battlefront, and it's like, hey, look at this half of a game. That was to appease the crowd. Great I wouldn't bags. be surprised if they. Um, if I wouldn't be surprised if there's a game, a proper game in the in the works that'll take another couple of years. I don't know. But Just the fact is, they have a whole universe to explore that's fresh. You could say, and right to the thinking, because the, the people complain about all the non-canon stuff that they have now because they've made so much stuff non-canon. But the, um, they, the reason they did that was so that they could do their own thing and write their own canon and explore their own universe without having to step over everyone else's toes because everything in the Asana universe was canon in and of itself. Yeah. And Which there I'm were novels with. written to explain how they're all connected and why they're not bullshit. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. And yeah. they can do their own thing. But, like, do your own thing. Like, make stuff. We don't need, like, six movies every single year. Just give us a video game once in a while. Come on, man. Um, also, speaking of, like, large universes, the next Shadow of Mordor game got leaked, too, so yeah. shout out to that becoming a sequel. I just saw that, that, that good. game off of Hack.com. Is, is, is any game not going to get leaked? I'm no. just honestly tired of how many leaks. Is any game so. not going to get pushed back from its release date? Better question. <laughs> no, That's... I don't think so. See, I'm okay with, I'm, I'm much more okay with delayed I release hate than I leak. Hate I'm okay Travis with delay because it means really it gets more time games, in the oven and so. it's a better game as a result but of it. But why are you just a... give enough time in the oven? Because you don't know that firsthand you when you're in the studio making a damn game because you get delays from oh, there's this problem that we have to work out or oh, we couldn't get uh, these assets on time or oh, hey, there's this bug that we didn't know about until now when, this, uh, when we started implementing these other features and it cripples the game in some way. We have to delay a couple months to figure it out. No, Stuart, clearly they're all just too busy playing their own game to actually Yeah, sure, why the fuck so, not? There it is. I mean, come on. Finally, my man, Andrew. Obviously. Travis, I'm not on your side. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's wrap this up because we've been going for almost an hour and a half and that's too long and nobody's going to listen to this, so... Uh, thank you for listening to the first episode of Buffering the... What was it called? Buffing, Buffing the Addiction. addiction.
Buffing the addiction, that's what it was. See, we'll we know what it was. Someday. Don't worry. Uh, so thank you for listening, and stick tuned for another episode in 2018 or something. That's how we make these, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Bye. See you guys next week. Bye.